Hello there, Richard Westwood here from St Anne's Church in Chasetown with a midweek message for Wednesday the 3rd of January 2024. A very happy new year to you and a warm welcome to our first midweek message of the new year. Uh, today is the, I think, ninth day of Christmas and uh, if we go by the song then I should probably be offering you, uh, I think, nine ladies dancing uh, and I'm sorry to disappoint you, we, we won't be <laughs> any dancing uh, or any ladies for that matter this morning um, but uh, well, I would like to pass on to you something which I hope is timely for this time of year uh, we'll soon be celebrating on the 12th day of Christmas uh, the season of Epiphany the feast of Epiphany which uh, in the church's year is the period where um, initially at least it was celebrated as the period where the, uh, the, the visit of the Magi the wise men uh, who came to visit Jesus after he was born, is celebrated. Uh, and over the course of the years, that's been uh, expanded upon in the church's uh, teaching to think not, to not just about the visit of the Magi, but also about um, the kind of God that God is, how this gets us thinking about God being a God who reaches out to people who aren't in the know, the, the not usual suspects. So uh, if you'll permit me, I'm going to read uh, in a moment the section from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, which tells us of the story of the Magi and then offer some thoughts for us as we enter the new year to do with this season of Epiphany. Uh, it's worth mentioning uh, what that word's about, really. Um, the Epiphany or an Epiphany is when you have a moment of, of revelation, a moment of insight, which uh, in our understanding is not one that you've thought up for yourself by being clever. It's a moment of insight which has been granted to you. Uh, inspiration, uh, insight that's come from elsewhere, from above, from God. So uh, that's where the epiphany comes from, because the, the Magi's journey uh, was started when they had um, insight or revelation which was not from within themselves, but from, from God from the star. So here's Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it arose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. There is lots in this account that Matthew includes of the journey of the Magi. And uh, I don't want to get too much into the detail about it, but it's worth just clocking a, f a few things. Um, it seems that, um, in what follows on in this next section of Matthew's Gospel, that the Magi were quite a while coming to visit Jesus after he had been born in Bethlehem. Uh, it says that uh, they came to the house where he was, uh, which suggests it was no longer the stable or the cave where Jesus was born that Luke tells us about. Um, in addition, later on in Matthew's Gospel, we're told that Herod tried to kill Jesus and uh, because he had heard uh, of the Magi's journey um, and found that Jesus wasn't there anymore, he took the, the horrible step of killing all the male children in Bethlehem of age two years and under. 
And this suggests to me that if Herod thought that he could have got away with doing with anything less than two years, he probably would have done. Um, so that suggests to me um, there was a fair bit of time between the Magi um, seeing the star and arriving to where Jesus was. But, so therefore we shouldn't really think too much about the, the Magi arriving in the stable uh, at the same time that perhaps as the shepherds were, uh, were there. Uh, so it gives us a kind of a different feel about this. The Magi had had a big journey. We're not told where they came from, but from the east. That's suggesting Persia, uh, Iran, uh, as it is now, um, or even further, further to, to the east, maybe even what is now Pakistan and so forth. In any event, the, um, the Magi's journey will have taken them many days, uh, and part of the process that's undergone here is that these people the Magi, the wise men, as it's traditionally translated, um, are um, not within the, the normal cluster of people who would have been within the Jewish faith community. They were well outside those who might have heard the stories of the Jesus being born or of the prophecy planning that there would be a Messiah, a chosen one born, who would be the rescuer of God's people. So they're completely outside the loop. And without the star, by which God communicated to them about Jesus' birth, they wouldn't have been able to hear about his birth, find their way to him. So the, the epiphany for them is this idea that God reaches out beyond the normal means that we might have of communication or that were available at the time, word of mouth or, or whatever at the time, um, to reach out to people who were not normally in a position to be able to hear this sort of good news. And it tells us about the kind of God that God is, that God will use all sorts of wonderful means to go outside um, the normal cluster of people who would be expecting to hear from God. And he goes out uh, and reaches out to them. God is a God who reaches out to all of humanity, even people like these magi, these wise men or sometimes the kings they referred to us. These people who hadn't got a chance really of hearing about God's purposes, God makes it possible for these people who are probably stargazers, astronomers, astrologers perhaps, looking into the star, wondering whether things that are happening in the night sky are some sort of sign of significance of things happening on the earth. Even if they've got cluttered thinking that we might think now, that they might think, well, looking in the star sky would give us ideas about what's going to happen on earth. God seems to use even that means to communicate to them the good news that Jesus has been born. So we learn from the story of the Magi, from the season of Epiphany, that God is a God who reaches out to us and to all sorts of people, people who are beyond the people, people who we wouldn't think might normally be those who would respond to God. And it teaches us as well, not just that God's a God who reveals himself to people on the inside and the outside, but that people on the outside are able to respond to God when they hear of the good news of Jesus' birth. And it's, it's significant, I guess, that lots of people will have seen the star. Lots of people will perhaps have noticed uh, this new appearing in the sky. But we're only told that it was these magi, these wise men, uh, who found their way to Jesus. So that tells us something else about this uh, epiphany, is that whilst God does reveal God's own self and God's good purposes to the world, there's a responsibility on all of us. Anyone who hears anything of God's love and God's good purposes have a responsibility for us to kind of meet God halfway at least, to say, God, have, as you've revealed yourself in this way to me, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to see if I can go and be in your direction, a bit like the wise men, the major I did there. So I wonder at the start of 2024 whether we might use this season of epiphany as, as a way of saying, God, how have you revealed yourself to me? How have you shown me your love and your good purposes? And if you've heard anything of the story of the birth, life, death and resurrection of Jesus, then obviously that's a principal way, the main way that God reaches out and shows us his love. So if you've heard any of that news, if we've heard anything like that, then 
part of our responsibility is to say, God, this year, please help me, please help us to respond. And I wonder whether this year might allow us to think about how we might do that. Perhaps we can um, think about ways that we might be able to, to pray more and respond to God in that way. Uh, most of us won't be able to sort of carve aside massive chunks of the day, but maybe we can have just a few minutes each day, maybe in a car journey, maybe a few moments at home, whatever it might be, maybe we can carve out that little portion of the day to say, God, I'm making my effort, I'm making my, um, my approach, my seeking of you something serious. We might be able to read some more of the Bible, and uh, there's some excellent apps on phones available now, particularly YouVersion, uh, available on uh, the um, Android and Apple phones through the various stores that you can get there for the, for the apps. YouVersion is a free downloadable app for the Bible, which gives really good uh, reading plans. You can write a little chunk for the, the Bible each day, uh, and that's uh, very doable. You can even have it read to you if you want. Uh, that app, YouVersion, will do that for you. Or maybe you can watch a bit of the story of Jesus. There's an excellent video uh, series that have been produced, available on Netflix, but also available you can watch for free uh, via, um, the, um, via the web. Uh, the program is called The Chosen. And it's an excellent dramatical adaptation of some of the life of Jesus. And that's well worth a watch as well, really thought-provoking. Maybe that's one of the ways that we can respond to God. Or, of course, we can find our way to church, either joining online or coming in person. Whatever church it might be that would be a good fit for you, maybe 2024 would be a good time to be more in earnest about seeking God, perhaps by uh, showing up at church or showing up more regularly, perhaps. Whatever. There's lots of ways that we can find a way that fits for us to be able to say, God, I am going to seek you this year, like the wise men who seek Jesus. That's something we can do ourselves too. Just a, a little word before I close with a prayer. Uh, um, the forthcoming uh, midweek messages in the next few weeks are going to be returning to our earlier theme of just Jesus, just John. Uh, and that'll be where the next few midweek messages come from. Uh, and as well as that, a reminder for those who come to St Anne's or plan to come to St Anne's, this coming Sunday, the 7th of January, is going to be uh, our 4 o'clock Sunday special. It's the first time we've done this single service in a day, uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's an all-age Sunday special service, uh, and that's our plan for the coming uh, months on the first Sunday it'll be a four o'clock all age service called Sunday special and we hope that lots of people will feel they'd like to come along and be a part of that so epiphany God revealing his good purposes his love and himself to us and our response is over to us let's pray living God thank you as we learn from the visit of the Magi and their discovery of you through through the star that you are reaching out to all kinds of people we pray lord that we would be people open to hear your voice and to receive however you choose to reveal yourself to us lord and you give us help grace to be able to seek you and respond with all we are and help us lord to be people who like you are also reaching out that maybe we can be the people who are part of your reaching of other people by what we say and do in our ordinary everyday lives. Lord, help us to be part of the passing on of the good news to other people. And help us, first of all, to respond with all we are and seek you in this week, this month and this year that lies ahead. We ask this because of Jesus your good news and your love to us. Amen. Thanks for listening. Have a good, happy new year and God bless you.